come with me to the video room. I want to show you something. No, man, I'm not for film right now. Come on. Seriously. Come on, Billy. Come on. The Visalia Oaks and our 240-pound catcher, Jeremy Brown, who, as you know, is scared to run to second base. This was in the game six weeks ago. This guy's going to start him off with a fastball. Jeremy's going to take him to deep center. Here's what's really interesting, because Jeremy's going to do what he never does. He's going to go for it. He's going to round first, and he's going to go for it. OK? This is all of Jeremy's nightmares coming to life. Oh, they're laughing at him. And Jeremy's about to find out why. Jeremy's about to realize that the ball went 60 feet over the fence. He hit a home run and didn't even realize it. How can you not be romantic about baseball? It's a metaphor. I know it's a metaphor. Okay. Pete, you're a good egg. Hey. <laughs> it's a good day. We get to celebrate God's faithfulness and who he is. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, it is Moneyball. It, it does have some language, so if you take your kids, <laughs> you got to guard their ears a little bit. But it is a great movie. It's a reminder of how many times in our life, when we do things, we don't totally realize until later. I, I, and I believe that's how it's going to be in heaven. When, many times when we talk about the scriptures, we talk about the Bible, we maybe see a pamphlet. I don't know if you've ever seen those pamphlets that says, this is your life. And then it has a big movie screen. And then you get to the, look at the movies and it's all your sin. And it's like God showing you all of your sin that you've ever committed. <laughs> and you know what? God, if he wants to do that, he has the ability. He can do that. You know what the scripture tells us? He says, he has casted our sin as far as the east is from the west. He has forgiven us. He washed us clean. That sin is a picture of Jesus. When he died on the cross, he became sin on the cross. And then what, what do we got right there? We got the empty tomb. We got the empty. So the empty tomb is a reminder, hey, right? God's not bringing it back up. God, God is totally cleansing us of our sin. He's there to help us when we're in need. We're struggling with a sin. He's there to be there for us. It's not like he has amnesia or anything like that. But he chooses to say, hey, I've forgiven you. I, I, I've made a new, made you to be a new creation, and that's who we are today. And so, to me, when I think of that money ball scene and that episode when they show the clip, it's a reminder of how God is. He's it, that's that's what He's doing. He's like, hey, you did great. He, he was telling Billy Bean, man, you did good. He didn't win the championship. But he was encouraging him, and he's saying, hey, you can't look at it that way. You have to say, you know what? The good that I did was perfect. I don't have to be the best. There's always going to be someone who's more handsome, Brad Pitt. You know, if I, if I had to get somebody to be like my life, I'd choose like Morgan Freeman, you know, <laughs> get, that, get that deep voice, <laughs> maybe be over my life. You know, there's always someone more rich. Guess what? Bezos, he might be rich this time. Guess what? There's always going to be someone richer. 
And what we have to do is we have to say, I don't have to be better than those people. I just have to be the best that I can be in Christ. That's who God wants us to be. You don't have to be greater. You don't have to be the best hitter or anything like that. Barry Bones, Barry Bones, Barry, <laughs> I was thinking about my friend from the gas pump, I always see, uh, his name Bones, I always see him, and, but Barry Bonds, you know, he, he was one of the greatest hitters that ever took place, I mean, a great, great hitter, okay, had, had some steroids <laughs> on them muscles, uh, I, you, personally, I, I don't mind that error too much, it was fun to watch, <laughs> But Barry Bonds, did you know what one thing that a lot of people don't think about him is that he was walked most of his career. Yeah, he took the most walks. That means every time that he went up to the plate, he didn't get a home run. It's not like he got a, this cool hit. No, they walked him many of the times. So he just has to stand there with his muscles <laughs> and his strength, and he stands up there. So that's a reminder for us in our Mondays and our Tuesdays. You don't have to do this great speech. You don't have to do this great uh, accomplished work. Sometimes some of the greatest acts are just raising a child, just encouraging your children, just being there for one another, making some good tacos for your family, making some good rice and beans. <laughs> That's why I said, I told my mom, I said, I can live off rice and beans. That's why I married my wife, Erica, right there. She good, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm blessed. <laughs> So we're reminded, and we are reminded of God's faithfulness and of who he is. We talked about the anointing oil. It's not what we're going to talk about today, but it's a reminder. We talked about the anointing oil on Easter. And what's so beautiful about oil, what's a huge blessing is that it is different. If you put that anointing oil over water, what's going to take place, it's, it's going to be different. And that's, that's what God has done for us. We're different. We're not like the world. We're not like Babylon. So if you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to chap uh, Daniel chapter 4, and we're reminded of that. So Babylon, the word Babylon means confusion. It was an enemy of Israel. That was one of the worst enemies. Every time Israel would do something bad, then Babylon would come in and they go and oppress the people that bring them into exile and then they turn to the Lord God bring in a prophet he bring in <laughs> like Samson and he go Samson go tear and, and attack and and then the the, uh, the the nation of Israel was able to be prosperous and be blessed and so we have to have a remembrance that God makes us different so for this message today I could have chosen anything to share with y'all today I chose any chapter in the Bible but I said you know what Let's do something different. And so today we're going to be talking about the king who ate grass. Not lettuce. You can have some lettuce if you want. <laughs> the king who ate grass. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. I think he's a great character to look at because it shows us how confused the world is. It shows us a reminder of who God is, that he is the one who's faithful. So just as here at High Five Church, we say we teach so that you highlight your Bible more. So one of the areas of that, if we're going to follow that, it means that we teach some things that you haven't highlighted yet. So guess what? Daniel chapter 4, I don't know if you've ever highlighted anything. <laughs> I, 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 let, me, let me see your Bibles if you got one. You, you, you can say, have, have I highlighted? Let me highlight that one real quick. Daniel chapter 4. So Daniel chapter 4 is a little different. We have amazing people who wrote the scriptures, but guess what? In Daniel chapter 4, we actually have Nebuchadnezzar, an evil king, like one of the worst people, one of the worst guys. He writes, and his writing is in the scriptures. That's pretty wild, okay? That is bizarre. It's strange. Because the story of who Nebuchadnezzar was, he was actually the one who, who threw out... And threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and put them in the fire. So he had no care about putting other people aside and throwing them into a fire simply because they would not bow down to a statue of himself. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a, a ruler 
just having a statue, not of like a famous person, like they just put up an Allen Iverson statue. It was a little short though. It was only about this tall. I said, man, what were they doing? <laughs> at least get it life size. At least get a, a, like a Dirk Nowitzki in, in Dallas, a cool statue. It, it, Dirk was, he's, he's leaning up like that. But for him, he, he gets a statue. And, you know, a thing, a thing about a statue is it's, it's great and it's a cool honor for a big place to have a statue of you. That's one thing. But for Daniel and for Nebuchadnezzar at his time, for him to get a statue of himself, that's, that's pretty wild. So in Daniel chapter 4, we read many things and we are reminded of God's faithfulness, how he takes care of us, how he guides and he directs us. So in Daniel chapter 4, we can see the faithfulness of God. We can get a lot of confusion, but it's the Lord who is faithful to us. He, he says, it's on the screen, I'm just going to read it. It says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, it's verse 1, the king to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language that live in the earth, may your peace abound it may seem good. It seemed good for me to declare the signs and wonders for which the God Most High has done for me. How great are His signs, and how mighty are His wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and His dominion is from generation to generation. Isn't that good? God is the one. He's the one who gives us from generation to generation. He's the one who encourages us. And so as we look to the scriptures, we're reminded of what took place. What is Nebuchadnezzar famous for? He's famous for destroying Solomon's temple, the great temple that Solomon built. He got extravagant things. That's like my dad. My dad didn't have one lawnmower, two lawnmowers, three lawnmowers. We took about eight or nine lawnmowers to Oscar, <laughs> my lawnmower guy, and I, I just gave it to him. I was like, do you, do you want these? We need to get rid of them. <laughs> it was ex extravagant. It was a lot. I was like, man, nine lawnmowers? That's it's just a lot. Extension cords, extension cords. How many, you want an extension cord? Take, take extension cord. <laughs> It, it, here, it, that's, that's who Solomon reminded me of, just that uh, a lot of stuff. And so in the same way, for our life, we have to rely on God. We said, Lord, you're the one who's faithful. So God can even use someone who's a bit extravagant like Solomon, and he used him. Remember, his father was David. David had, a, had the dream in his heart to build a temple. But what takes place is the people rebel and God kind of puts his hands up and he says, look, if y'all are not going to follow, then there's nothing that I can do. God's their leader. He's trying to lead them and direct them. But ultimately, a leader cannot control the people. God would have to make them to be puppets and just force them to do this. But that's not who God is. God allows them to make the decision. So Nebuchadnezzar, actually, because the people are not following God, Nebuchadnezzar actually goes and he tears the temple apart. He goes and sieges it. Many people are killed. And so that, that temple that we look at, that beautiful temple, was destroyed. That was the first temple. And then later in Ezra, and then, of course, in the other scriptures, we see how God restored the temple. And he, he blessed us with that. So the second temple, then later, of course, it is destroyed. That second temple was a temple that Jesus saw. It was remodeled later. But then at 70 AD, after the death of Jesus Christ, even today, the, the nation of Israel does not have a temple. So we can see how, how this takes place. Thankfully, today, guess what? We don't have to worry about building a new temple. We got the temple right here. It's, it's called the Temple of the Holy Ghost. And that's Jesus Christ. So he, said, he says this, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at ease in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream and it made me fearful. All these fantasies as I laid in my bed and the visions in my mind kept alarming me. These visions, they, they bothered me. I don't know if you've ever had a dream, something that bothered you a lot. 
I, I think it's the orders at Starbucks that I have to remember. It's the frappe, potato te orders. Give me, give me a, a grande lasagna. Four pumps of Beethoven. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> give me a mocha. I feel like I just want to say a redneck. I just want, can, I, can I get a, a four ounce steak? Four pumps of gravy. Can I get three sticks of butter? I can remember that one. But these dreams, they're bother, these dreams are bothering you, and that's what takes place. When someone doesn't follow after God, it doesn't mean that you're never going to uh, not be awake at night. It doesn't mean that you're just 100% of the time you're, you're going to go through a perfect sleep. But it's a reminder, it's the Lord who gives us good rest. The Bible says that it's the righteous. Those, those who know that they're righteous with God, they sleep in peace. And the scripture, there's a scripture for it. I don't have the verse, but it says... He gives to his beloved in his sleep. He gives, in other words, it's like God saying, I'm, I give you good rest. I give you good sleep where you're relaxed, you're comfortable. As my, my dad said he never had a dream. He, he never, he said, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're dreaming. <laughs> I thought he was joking with me for a long time, but he, that's what he said. That was his word. He said, I never had a dream. I, I don't dream. So it's amazing. God is there. He's the one who blesses us in our sleep. He's the one who comforts us in our sleep. He, ge he gives to us. He blesses us. Even if you don't have a dream, you can say, I don't, I don't dream lately. It's, it's still God can give you that good sleep. He can still bless you. So what does he dream about? What is, what is his vision? He dreams of a tree that grows large. I'm just going to read it. It says, The tree grew large and became strong, and its height reached to the sky and was visible to the end of the whole earth. Its foliage was abundant, and its fruit was abundant. Its foliage was beautiful, and its fruit abundant. And there was fruit and food in all of it. The beasts of the field found shade under it, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. All living creatures fed themselves from it. And I was looking, and the visions of my head, there I lay in bed. Behold, an angelic watcher, a holy one, descended from heaven. He shouted out and spoke out as follows, Chop down the tree and cut it from its branches. Strip off its foliage and scatter its fruit. Let the beast flee from under it and the birds from its branches, Let, yet leave the stump with its roots in the ground, but have it with a band of iron and bronze all around it and the new grass of the field. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him share with the beast of the field and the grass of the earth. Let seven periods of time pass over him. And this sentence is by the decree of the angelic watchers. And the decision is a command of the holy ones. In order that the living may know that the Most High is ruler over the realm of mankind. And be, bestows on it whom he wishes and sets on the lowliest men. This is the dream I, Nebuchadnezzar, had. I tell to you. So what takes place later with Nebuchadnezzar? is here's a man who went and it really did a lot of destruction and went and attacked the Lord, attacked the nation of God. And especially during this time, you have Daniel who rises up, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all of their names were actually changed. They were changed like from Meshach, that it was the, of the moon god. All, all of these di different names. Abednego is the god of Nego, the god of Nebo, not Nemo. We, 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 can, we can think of all these things. So Nebuchadnezzar is trying to change all these things, but it's the reminder of who they are. Shadrach, Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they knew the name that, the, that God had given to them, not the name that Nebuchadnezzar had changed for them. So Nebuchadnezzar is a reminder of what we have without God. It's a reminder of what we have with the Lord. We have greatness with God. God. God's there with us. He makes us to be strong. And he's there to comfort us. So even Daniel, Daniel goes to him. He tries to encourage him. And he, he's appalled and he's shocked by everything that the king is talking about. 
But all the people they, they, all the people who could interpret dreams, they did not give the king an answer. And even right here, these are some images of where Babylon would have been during that time. That's what many speculate. And so we look at this and we see how Daniel was able to actually speak the truth. He gave the bad news to the king because all the other people, they were like, oh, we don't know what your dream means <laughs> because the dream was bad news for him. Here he had been against the Lord and doing things in the wrong way. But it's the Lord who's bringing strength, the Lord who's there for him. So here's Daniel. He's taking care of him. And what takes place is it, Daniel explains to him that you will be driven out from mankind and your dwelling place will be like the beasts of the fields and you'll be given grass to eat like cattle and be drenched from the dew of heaven. And seven periods of time will pass over you until you recognize that the Most High is ruler over the realms of mankind and bestows on it whom he wishes. For some, they would look at this, they would say, well, God is always in control of everything. And I think there's a difference between God saying God is not in control, which means like zero. And then there's a difference between saying God is 100% in every, in every situation, every, he's controlling everything. I think what we see throughout the scriptures it's not a definite number. I'm not here to give you 50, 99, 0.8, It's just a reminder that the Lord throughout our life, he's there to guide things and also to give us divine appointments where we're at the right place at the right time. And then he's also there to give us that free will. He tells the nation of Israel, choose this day whom you will serve. And he also says in other scriptures, hey, if you honor your mother and father, your life will be prolonged. So isn't that good? Whenever uh, I go and I listen to my suegro, I can, I can be blessed. Guess what? My, my car gets to be a little bit running, a little bit smoother. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> my car rides a little bit clear. I'm like, wow, all right. <laughs> it's a little bit nicer. Guess what? When I, when I helped my mom when I was young uh, and I, I went over there, I pulled all the mulch. I didn't want to do it when I was young. I, I don't want, want to pull all those weeds up when I was a kid. Guess what? Today, this week in my house, I was able to, I, I knew what to do. I knew how to get the mulch. I knew how to pull the dirt out. I said, you know, my, my life is better because I follow the ways of God. I'm not saying everything that I do is, is great. I make, make a lot of mistakes. But it's, it's God who's, who's there for us. He's like, man, I want to bless you. I want to take care. Even for Nebuchadnezzar, he was like, man, come on. You don't have to do all these evil things. And that's why Daniel was like, man, you've you got to turn to the Lord. And God did some weird things in the scripture. And, and some weird things took place. It says that all this took place, but then a, a year took place. So for 12 months, God gave 12 months for Nebuchadnezzar to turn to the Lord. Daniel. Daniel was telling him, hey, you need to turn to God. This is his time. You know, you, you, you've done all this stuff against the Lord, but it's time. It's, it's not about your kingdom. It's about God's kingdom, the true king. He, he was serving every other place, every other God, but it was the Lord that was guiding and directing. All. And so all this took place. It's in verse 28. I'm just going to read it. It says, all this took place in Nebuchadnezzar the king. Twelve months later, he was walking on the roof of the royal place of Babylon. The king reflected and said, is this Babylon the great which I myself have built as a royal residence by the might and the power and for the glory of my majesty? And so God was like, he was, he was helping, he, he was guiding. And then here's here's. Nebuchadnezzar saying, yeah, this is what I accomplished. This is what I did. And so what takes place is what we see. The, the word of the Lord was in the king's mouth, a voice from heaven saying, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it has been declared sovereignty has been removed from you. He was saying, you, you attacked my people. You went against me. And I'm going to show you. I'm going I'm to show you something. <laughs> in the New Testament, we see what takes place with Saul. With Saul, actually, God took the eyesight and shone a light on top of Saul to where he saw it. And light came shining, and then he heard the voice of God speaking to him. And so in the same way, we can see that the Lord speaks to us. He reminds us. But guess what? For Paul and Saul, remember, God changed his name. 
And what takes place is Saul repents and turns to the Lord saying, hey, I'm not going to kill your enemies any, any longer. The same way Nebuchadnezzar was going against the people of God, in the same way Saul was going against the Lord and attacking many of the people of God. And so what takes place is God shines a light, God speaks a message, but it doesn't take a year or even seven years. But it's Saul, he turns and he says, I'm going to change my name. He, he, gets, he allows God to change his name to Paul, and then boom, he begins to preach the gospel. He receives God's message. So I think God can teach us and he can guide us, but it's a reminder that God is the one who's faithful. So it says that Nebuchadnezzar became like confused. He had dew like the dew of the grass on his back. He, it says that he grew out feathers almost basically, I guess he had very long skin that had grown out. It says seven periods of time. So if it's seven days, probably not going to take that long. Seven months, not going to take that long. Probably seven years if it's seven periods of time. And it's a really wild story. It's really something to think about. And it says until he had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails came like bird claws. That's why, hey, that'll be a reminder. It's okay, get your nails done. <laughs> Come on, they don't got to be like nail claws. As long as they're not curling or anything. <laughs> so immediately, the work concerning that Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled, he had been driven mad and to mankind began eating grass like cattle. This is what takes place when we, we don't have God working on the inside of us. Without God, this is what, all that we're left with if we just deny who the Lord is. Even in Israel, at one time, whenever God raised up the bronze serpent to heal all the people, all the snakes, they were in the wilderness the whole time. It wasn't like God just, I mean, he could have supernaturally created the snakes. But there's evil all in this world all the time, and God is preventing much of it. He's protecting much of it. And what took place for them, for the bronze serpent, was they rejected God, and they rejected him, and so then the fiery serpents went and they found them. They got the snakes and they got bit by them. But even then, God was providing for them and showing them. So I'm thankful we live in a new covenant. Guess what? We don't live in Babylon. We're not going to go crazy. <laughs> I don't believe that that's what God's going to do to us. But I believe it is an amazing story to be in remembrance and to say, man, thank you, Lord, for my mind. And God, God gives us a, a clear mind. God helps us. We don't have to be like cattle eating the grass. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but if we say, I don't need anything of God's, what are we left with? We're, we're really left with nothing. Because even our hands, even our legs, it is all created by God. And so thankfully, Nebuchadnezzar does repent and turn to the Lord. And we're reminded in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. And as in all the churches of the saints, isn't that good? He, he, he brings peace. He brings order to our life. And I'm reminded of this right here. Just as Jesus, what does he do in the new covenant? He commanded all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. It's not like Nebuchadnezzar, not going to eat the grass. <laughs> but, but he's going to feed them. He's not going to feed on the grass, but Jesus Christ, he is the one who's going to feed us. He's going to take care of us. So it's the Lord. The Lord gives us the sound mind. The Lord gives us the power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's right here, the same Christ that raised Jesus from the dead, lives on the inside of us. We don't have to be like Nebuchadnezzar, be confused and live in chaos. We can live with Christ and sit on the grass and say, thank you, Lord, for your sound mind. I'm not like a, a creation. I'm not like a creature of the animal. No, but God has blessed me and has helped me. And so I know we, we may look at this and say, man, God, that was kind of mean. That was mean. Well, Nebuchadnezzar did a lot of mean stuff. <laughs> he did a lot of mean stuff. Even that, he didn't allow it for uh, eternity or anything like that. But it was just for a period. And the final, final last two verses, we're going to read these and we're going to conclude this sermon. So we're reminded of God's faithfulness. And it says this, at that time, this is Nebuchadnezzar speaking up. 
Because notice the whole time he has the ability to turn to the Lord. He has the ability to turn to God. But God was like, look, no longer. You're not going to attack my people. You're not going to go against them. I'm going to protect my people. And, and how, how great is the empire when your ruler can't even go and do anything, accomplish anything, is go over there eating grass. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? It shows the strength, the strength of Jesus Christ. It's like, I, I can make the, the your enemies, they're just, they just be like eating grass. <laughs> like, come on, how great is our God? He, he uses the foolishness to, to confound the wise. They, they would think, man, Nebuchadnezzar, you great warrior, you're awesome. And God was like, hey, I gave you that brain. I gave you that, that strength. I gave you that stomach. I gave you those muscles. And he was reminding Nebuchadnezzar, saying, hey, you're not going to mess with Israel no, no longer. You're going you're gonna to redeem them. And what later takes place is Israel is brought in. After 70 years of, of exile, they're brought back into the nation. And God takes care of them. So isn't that good for us? God's going to take care of us. He's going to be there for us. So Nebuchadnezzar, he says this. And finally, I, at the end of that period, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my reason returned to me. Isn't that good? It's, see, that's how we live our life. We're not controlled. Our, our actions aren't controlled by God, but we have a free choice. We have a free brain, and he allows us. He gives us that reason. We can choose good. We can choose evil. The world, many times, the, the world chooses evil. They choose the candy bar. They choose, that's, that's, that's the devil. He, he's trying to get it to that impulse. They choose the wrong things. But guess what? It's God. He, he, he gives us that reason. And I'm, I'm blessed because of that. That right there, that shows us that God has given to all of us reason. We we've all have a good mind. And he says this, At that time, my reason returned to me, and my majesty and my splendor were just restored to me. He's talking about his kingdom. And the glory of my kingdom and my counselors and my nobles began seeking me out so that I was reestablished in my sovereignty and surpassing greatness was added to me. I, Nebuchadnezzar, I praise, exalt, and honor the king of heaven for his works are true and his ways are just. And he is to humble those who walk in pride. God's able to give grace to us. God blesses us. That, he doesn't want us walking in confusion to be like Nebuchadnezzar, just eating grass. But he wants us to have a sound mind, a smart heart. And he wants us to just be like James. James chapter 4, verse 6 says, But he gives greater grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the, opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Isn't that good? Everything that we have on this earth, as great as we have, the greatest things that we own, the greatest accomplishments that we can make, it's only because of Jesus Christ. How are we blessed today? Under the old covenant, it was all by works. But under the new covenant, it's a greater grace. It's God gives grace to the humble. We just freely say, Lord, we are in need of you. We, we have sinned. We've made mistakes. But we need Jesus. And that's what he does for us. He takes us out of Babylon. We gotta leave Babylon, leave that place of complete confusion and be blessed. So a reminder of God, he doesn't give us grass, he gives us grace. Gives us grace. It says the grass, grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. So can we do that today? Can we be reminded of God's faithfulness? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for all that you are. Lord, we thank you for these stories. They're stories to benefit us, to remind us of who you are. Lord, even Nebuchadnezzar, as he went through that weird, wild time, but he was just eating grass. Lord, we're reminded that you don't have us to be confused. You give us a sound mind. You give us reason. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you protect us and guide us. That's what God's will is. Scripture says, For you are not born, not of a seed of, that is perishable, but imperishable, that through all the living and enduring word of God, for all flesh is like the grass, and the glory of, is like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. 
And that is the word which was preached to you. So it's God's word. God's word is the one that is faithful. It is strong for us. So maybe as we pray, can we ask the Lord, will you guide us, direct us? If you've never made Jesus your Savior, will you talk to us after the service? Will you, will you let us talk to you more about who Jesus is? Ask questions about the Bible. Why does, why does Nebuchadnezzar eat grass? Why do these things take place? Why do we see these things take place in the scriptures? Ask God and he's going to answer you. He's going to guide you. For the rest of us, let's just continue to be thankful for God. Can we pray? And just as we pray, I just want us to, to say it loud and say it proud. I just want to lead you into a prayer. We're just going to ask God just to guide us and direct us. We're going to say this, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the cross. May you continue to bless us. Lord, continue to give us a reason, to give us purpose. Help us to have a sound mind. And I thank you, Lord, for your healing. Or may we, may we rely on you for our life. Thank you, Lord. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Lord, I just bless every person that's here. I pray you strengthen them and bless them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. We can be blessed today that we have a, a good mind with Christ, a sound mind, a strengthened mind in the name of Jesus from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet for all of the days that we walk on this earth. Lord, will you, you bless us? Lord, will you give grace to us? We need it. We need you, Lord. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Everyone say it. Amen. Everyone say it. Amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and give them a high five. Y'all have a great Sunday. Enjoy it. <laughs> God is faithful. You have been listening to a message by Pastor Caleb Gibson. For more information about High Five Church, please visit our website at highfivechurch.com. If you enjoyed this message, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Remember, 